This is my Devin Aiken meets um, Mo sense of humor. So a woman's place is either in the ohm or the resistance. <laughs> Wherever you are, Devin, love you. Okay, so I literally hit save before I came up. I was uh, ready for Thursday. So thank you for showing up for a presentation I almost didn't show up for. Um, the takeaway from this present, uh, from this slide is that yes, I finally figured out how to send in my paperwork and I have a number. And two, I finally got access to the corporate Shutterstock account, so if nothing else, you're gonna get some pretty graphics. They're probably taking them away from me soon, so pay attention. So, welcome to uh, Wi-Fi Club, and of course, the first rule of Wi-Fi Club is, um, it may not be well understood, I know that there have been a lot of really good blogs out there um, on um, uh, WPA3, and at least one that completely missed the point, but, um, some of them may have felt a little anemic, and there's a good reason for that. Um, it, may not be, it may not be widely known, but the WFA keeps a uh, pretty tight um, control over, there's some confidentiality clauses, at least until the protocol becomes standardized. And so um, there are some strict rules about what can and cannot be said. Um, and since I didn't go to law school, um, today's goal is I now have minutes to say something that's useful and interesting, but also legal. So, first, let's talk about the, um, the perception or the, uh, the reality versus the perception of the reason behind the updates. Um, the world lost its mind last year, and what I believe it was Fox or Guardian said that uh, Wi-Fi has not been hit by an electromagnetic pulse. Um, but a lot of the blogs, at least 50% of the ones that I saw, led with, well, of course, we have WPA3 on the heels of um, Wi-Fi being cracked. The reality is that Wi-Fi's ego got bruised a little bit, but it, it's not broken. Um, the real reality is that um, this BlackBerry was cutting-edge technology when WPA2 got announced, and the iPhone the first iPhone was three years from being released. And so Wi-Fi keeps innovating and changing and the security that supports it also needs to. And, and really that's the, the, the reality. So this portion of our uh, presentation is the just the facts, ma'am, which is why you saw Scully on the previous slide. So bear with me. Um, so the WPA2 enhancements, and I saw that a lot, I mean, almost no one talked about those and there's a reason for it because it's not that interesting. But it's, it's part of the announcement, and so I just wanted to cover it. So the first part of the enhancement for WPA2 is, uh, has to do with 11W. Uh, so it has the protected management frames, which has been largely adopted by vendors and clients already. But to get the WPA2 certification for the enhancement, it's now going to be mandatory. Um, the second feature, which the WFA uh, wrote as, devices are required to validate network authentication server certificates appropriately. Okay, all that stuff that you did to patch for crack, it's now mandatory also, and it will go into the WPA3 as well. And the third one is that it's gonna standardize the cryptographic suite. Now it's still at 128 bits, um, but it's all standardized. Now the good news for you, and I'm not gonna speak for all vendors, but the good news is that most of them are probably already there. The certification's not out yet, but the chances are that they're probably already there for the enhancements. So for the features, let's talk first about um, SAE. So simultaneous authentication of equals has to do with um, um, protecting you against stupid passwords, right? Um, and at least a couple of blogs have sort of described that this is going to protect you against dictionary attacks. Um, this is not Webster's Dictionary. This is a protection against a dictionary attack that was created um, using something like what this graphic says um, has, this is a web scraper, and the way these work is that a dictionary attack isn't going to Webster's Dictionary, it's going to the Gregor dictionary because I have scraped all of your social media and I have come up with the most likely 
versions of passwords that you would use. And I, you, there's a dictionary out there just for you, or one out there um, just for Keith. Well, and thank you for the segue, sir. Because the second bullet references OCHCO123, and I said it's protecting you from dictionary attacks, but not from the US Secret Service. And this is a, a nod to Roman Seleznev, who is perhaps the world's best hacker in terms of credit card theft in the world. Not only is he the best at stealing credit cards, but he actually invented his own business model and later set up a marketplace on the dark web so that he was selling other people's stolen credit cards and just commission. So this guy is really smart, right? Only when they caught on to him, which was fairly early on, he had to keep changing identities, he kept using the same password for multiple accounts, OCHCO123. So when the US Secret Service caught up to him on vacation, and we all take a laptop with us on vacation, we all take an encrypted laptop with us on vacation, all they had to do was put in OCHCO123, and there were 127 million stolen credit cards, because you take that with you when you go to the Maldives, right? So it was pretty much over with for him. So no, SAE is not going to protect you against stupid, but it will protect you against things like a, what an actual dictionary attack is. So that's there, and that's, that's all to the better, and it's, it's, it's a long time coming, and that's a great thing. Um, OWE, Opportunistic Wireless Encryption. Um, and if you want to have a good time, go out. There's RFC 8110 that was written more than a few years ago, and it's um, probably going to be the basis for this. Um, this is um, going to uh, give us some protections for open SSIDs. So as much as I got tired of hearing myself say, well, maybe a good thing can come out of crack. Maybe we'll start paying attention to the honest to God real problems, like man in the middle attacks. Um, and, um, and spear phishing. I haven't seen that borne out, but I, am, I do still have hope. So the opportunistic, uh, or OWE, is going to give us uh, the ability to, instead of having an open SSID, having an SSID that um, a negotiation will happen between the access point and the client, and there'll be a Diffie-Hellman exchange, and so you'll actually have a key that's not exchanged by any humans, and therefore potentially much more secure. Um, and then the last one is DPP. Um, and this, the idea behind this is to protect anything that's sort of a headless device, anything that's an IoT device that in the past we've had to rely on using a smartphone or, a, um, a, or a, a, the um, a pass point. And so the methodology behind this, I can't really talk legally more about that, but I'm looking forward to it, uh, coming back and saying some more about that. The, uh, the idea is that uh, uh, this is going to be, ah, now I forgot what my last uh, point on that one is. IOT, da, da, da. oh, MDU and, and, um, and hospitality, I think this, there's real potential for this, not just the high-end integrated home uh, market. So what's it all mean? Are you all going to have to do a forklift upgrade for any of this? Everything I've talked about up until now, Probably not. I can't speak for all vendors, but there are, and I'm, the caveat is that we're talking about the latest access points. If you've got something that's still supported but end of sale, it's probably not going to have the onboard resources to deal with what is going to almost definitely be just a firmware upgrade. So all of those things are, are good news. Of course, there's a caveat. The 192 bit encryption. I'm going to explain the cute graphic in a second if I, ha I have 60 more seconds. Um, this is the slide where I was going to talk about classical encryption versus the quantum encryption that's coming up that my husband told me was a bridge way too far. So if I had more than 10 minutes, I'd tell you uh, more about classic encryption, Alice and Bob. But we're going to talk instead about Sweet B. I told you I had Shutterstock. I didn't say they had anything that said for Sweet B. But so it's my Sweet B. So all of my Arrowhive people, that's my love for you. Uh, I know what you're asking. Does this have anything to do with elliptical curve? Um, Cryptography. No. Elliptical curve cryptography in the era of a quantum computer will be crackable within a few minutes. Everything that we're doing up in classical encryption, which is the largest um, prime number times the second largest prime number, take that product and then factor it, they'll be able to do that in seconds, like it's going through butter. But even elliptical curve cryptography will be able to be broken. So, and if I get to come back, I'll explain to you how you get ice cream with elliptic curve, uh, with uh, post-quantum cryptography key dist distribution. But until then, just remember that uh, ITDRC 
org is out there and supporting uh, from NorCal to Virgin Islands. This guy up there is an Aruba SE. He spent a weekend deploying uh, ruckus access points that I was supporting from my, the comfort of my own living room. Because when you're talking to people in FEMA trailers who've lost literally everything, it just doesn't matter whose vendor's uh, equipment you have and what uh, vendor you work for. ITDRC. And thank you to, oh, somebody volunteered to give me your old gear yesterday. So thank you for you guys.